Welcome to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, April 3rd, uh, 2018. Would you like to rise and join me with the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could remain standing, I'd like to have a moment of silence for James Allen, who was a lifelong resident of our community. He passed away last week. Jim, um, who was a very prominent citizen in our community, he was a longtime moderator. He was on the board of selectmen. He was on many, many committees in town. And he was a wonderful man, and uh, it's such a loss to the community to lose Jim. So I'd like a moment of silence for him. Can I share one story about Jim? Oh, of course Jim? you can. So, of course, I had the opportunity to speak at his uh, funeral the other mm -hmm. day to represent the church and, and also yeah. the town as far as mm -hmm. um, commenting his, uh, his service to the town and to the church. And so one story uh, came out that I thought would, you both would enjoy. So as it works out, Jim did not run for selectman or service selectman until very late in his career yeah, with the town. That. And so Jim would, would say and did say that he thought he was liked by everyone in town until he ran for select. And then no one liked him. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought you'd enjoy yeah, that I story. Yeah, he, that. Was our long, he was our long time moderator yeah. in the town. He oh, was, as, we, as he was for the church. Yeah. I, I've known, I knew Jim from the time I grew up. He used to, when he first got out of the service, my father had always, he worked for the state. And in the summer, he used to, um, he was a supervisor at, it was called Dean Pond in Broomfield, and Jim was the lifeguard when he went to college over there. So mm -hmm. I've known Jim just since I was a little girl, and he would, to me, he was always like a mentor for all the years that I've known him. So I just think it's a big loss to lose him. Yeah, he was a wonderful man. Good guy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. I would like um, a motion to uh, approve the expense warrant for three. 2618 uh, for $82,087.97 and approve a payroll warrant for 32818 for $159,734.29. Approve an expense warrant for 4318 for $44,578.03 and approve an expense warrant for 413 18 for 4318 for $1,536.66. You have that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I would like to approve the selectmen's meetings minutes of 22018. Do you have a motion to that effect? Second. All in favor? Aye. And acknowledge the minutes and reports from other departments uh, from the Cultural Council minutes of 3518. Do you have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have a few announcements. Uh, the regional WRTA public hearing will be held on April 2nd, 12th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. at the Brookfield Congregational Church at 8 Common Street. This relates to possible changes to the WRTA root system Area residents who ride the bus or those who wish to support this vital transportation link are encouraged to attend. Tyler Wallen, District 8 to Senator Ann Gobi, will hold office hours from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Wednesday, April 11th at the Town Hall. All are welcome. And then I have another one to read. It's about Operation Clean Sweep. It's the second annual John T. O'Leary Memorial Operation Clean Sweep, Saturday, April 21st, 2018, time 7.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Operation Clean Sweep was started by a group of dedicated Brookfield residents who felt great pride in the community they lived in and were willing to donate a Saturday morning of their time to clean up the roadsides and special public places of their hometown. Over the years, the number of volunteers had 
fluctuated, but John O'Leary was always willing to help, so we're continuing the effort in his memory. Scouts, faith, faith organizations, sportsmen, and residents are all encouraged to help make Brookfield a town to be proud of. This year's coordinator will be George Hurdle. He will be at the Highway Garage at 56 Maple Street with trash bags for roadside and town property cleanup from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. For more information or to volunteer, please call George at 508-367-0955 or contact the Brookfield Highway Department at 508-867-8357 or email highway at brookfieldma.us. For more details, please check the Brookfield Community Facebook page. The rain date for this will be 428 18. Thank you. Okay, does anybody else have any announcements this evening? <coughs> any, any announcements? Okay. okay, we have public access now. If anybody would like to say anything at public access. Good evening. Do we have any, Madam Chairman, do we have any plans on getting time clocks <clears throat> for this town hall? Hmm. No, I don't think that the subject has been brought up by anybody. Recently? Recently. Recently. No, we haven't heard anything recently about that at all. Okay, well, I'm going to call it the way it is, as I always do in this town. We got, we got a situation, employees in this town that are not working their hours, and timesheets are being falsified. And the work isn't getting done based, based on a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, and it's, all, it's, it's, it's pretty much criminal what's going on here. And everyone knows what's going on, and everyone's covering for everyone. And you can't dispute that. And we can always play the camera back in the foyer to see who's coming and going, and the, uh, the timesheets are being falsified. So that's why I'm asking you about time clocks. That would be the first step in correcting this situation. So <clears throat> in general, I'm making a general statement. <clears throat> no, this board has been attacked for criminal activity. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. We're not going to discuss this today. We're not going to say Absolutely that we've had not. criminal activity in this community and people doing criminal. It's, I, what, let me rephrase that then. It's, 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 it's criminal what is going on. I mean, if we, you know, maybe you no. might think if um, mm. we we're done. we're done with this. I don't want to go any further with this at all. So we're going to have the same punk attitude as just we don't care. I don't, I don't like that attitude. Look the we other way. That's the attitude that I'm trying to put. That's the attitude. No, if you're going to be like this, Dave. No, I'm asking a simple can, question. You can leave or you can go sit back down. In the office, no, no, no. I, the you, every time I, I bring up, something. every time I bring up something that's not going correct in this town. All three of you want to look the other way. May I, <clears throat> no, may I make you're, a recommendation? If you're, if you're brief. If, if there is some item of contention that you feel that there is something that is um, a, a character issue or an inappropriate activity, that is something that is for executive session and should be communicated formally with the specific details that um, uh, with specific names and specific mm -hmm. individuals, and then that can get addressed based on you know appropriate ways through appropriate notification of the personnel and and something that's a venue where they get to choose whether that's in executive session or open session. You're make you're in essence generically maligning multiple people in a vague manner is not appropriate for an open meeting. So if it's, you want if you want to mm -hmm. if you want to document something and send something specifically to our office with specific names and specific times <clears throat> and specific dates, that's potentially an appropriate way to communicate okay. this. What you're doing right now, not appropriate and this is not the venue. Because that like, is an executive session. And issue. like I have told you before, Dave, if you want to talk about different things, get on the Get on the agenda with these specific things. And if you think things like this, like Beth just said, should be an executive session, then you should want it. You should do that and request that. I asked for something to be on the agenda before, and you didn't get put on. <clears throat> what did you ask? I forget what. 
I asked Karen. I don't remember yeah. that. And, and it's not a contention, Beth. It's just a general situation that is no, taking actually, place. State Excuse me, I'm speaking. Okay, I'm tired of this town just letting things go, go by the side, okay? It's a bad attitude. I didn't say anything. It's not a contention. It's a situation and it's a problem that is going on in our town hall, and I'm bringing it up to you in a general matter, and I'm asking you, what are you going to do? What can we do to Thank correct you. this? What can be done is a citizen could, could file a citizen's petition. And it could be with 10 signatures, uh, as yes, I understand it, can be before town yeah, meeting. Yeah. And then the folks of the town could, in fact, decide whether that's or not right. 10 o'clock were yeah. appropriate. If you yeah. feel if that's what you want to be, like Mr. Snyder just said, do a citizen's petition with 10 signatures and get it into us, I think, by the 30th of April. Yep. And we will put it on the agenda. We'll put I mean, it on we'll the put water. it on the warrant. It's yeah. the law. For what, the, the time clocks? Yeah. <clears throat> if this is what you want to do. Okay. Just understand that's a potentially double-edged sword because people document every minute and we wind up in a situation where we find that we're not paying appropriate overtime for time work. And it's we have a citizen who is making a recommendation on a, well, I don't, on a warrant. I, I don't think that's the situation, Beth. We get people that supposedly are working at home. Some people that are supposed to be here, they're not here. We don't have anybody working so, at home anymore. So, okay, good. I'm glad you said that. Okay. Okay. I, I would. All right. So I just I brought it up. Are working uh, more hours than. The, yeah, they are more work. They're working more hours here. I know we can paint a nice picture with the brush linder, but it's not happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Things well, are not getting our, done. Well, that's our that's, suggestion to you, David. Okay. This is what but I'm just making a general. Just, you just said that. Oh, everything's the things are not wonderful here. The finances are a wreck. We are so screwed up in this town, it's unbelievable, Linda. All right. And you keep painting the picture no, that everything is beautiful. It's not. And then we gotta get things, we gotta get down to basics and we gotta get things done. Okay. All right, thank That's you. That's your opinion, it's not the opinion of everybody here in the community. No, I didn't say it was everybody's opinion. It's my, I'm the one to, making the statement. I didn't talk about anyone else in the, in the community. That statement is strictly for me, Linda. Okay, at least I get the guts and I care enough to come up before this town and make a statement, okay? At least I do that, and other people don't. I do, okay? okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Once again, you're just gonna, you know, yeah, everything's good, just let it go. Don't make any changes. Okay, anybody else have anything with public access to say? Yeah, yeah. did, did uh, did Mr. Cleveland have something that's not currently Ken, did you have anything? No, I think we need to make some new rules and regulations up for these sole farms. Uh, we only have three of them here for the question. I know a couple of fellows just bought 50 acres of land up on uh, Corbin Road. They called me, they want to come into the Conservation Commission and get. Um, see what they need to do. As I was talking to Beth about it, we need you three to make up a suggestion well, list. When we had, we met with town council yesterday and they said that um, different communities are doing bylaws on them. So they are going to be sending us some different bylaws to go over and we'll go over them and then we will present them to the bylaw committee. This is a third. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking as chair of the planning board, um, any issues involving solar panels is properly a zoning issue, not the town bylaws. And we have been looking into that on the planning board. Well, maybe we'll turn them over to you then when they come in because town council said that they, they're going to send us copies of what other ones are. That would be amazingly helpful if you could okay. do that. We're actually meeting tomorrow and that's on the agenda, so it's okay. good timing. Yeah, we haven't gotten, gotten them. Why don't you get in touch with them tomorrow and see if we can get them. I also have the West Brookfield one that I can give her. And she oh, she does have that. Yeah. You have the West Brookfield one. Okay. So Carol will call, call town council I, I, tomorrow and see if she can get them. There's one more thing I'd like to add. Okay. Keeping in mind your schedule, we have one meeting between between now and the time that the warrant closes on April 30th. Since we meet the first Wednesday of each month, that's the only meeting we're going to have, and we need to hold a hearing on any bylaw proposals okay. prior to the select board getting the the draft of them. Okay. So, um, and that has to be. Um, advertised two weeks in advance of the hearing. 
So we're not going to make the deadline. This was something I was going to bring up um, at the planning board meeting. If we have to adhere strictly to the warrant deadlines you've set, we're not going to have time to put anything on the warrant. So long as we meet the bylaw standards for that, we could always yeah. reopen and reclose the warrant if necessary oh, yeah, for something can. that critical, that. I would think. So okay. as long as we can beat the bylaw, um, then I think we, could, we would certainly consider reopening and closing the, the warrant. Then what I will do is direct the planning board into um, what we need to do for a schedule, and I will keep close contact with you folks about how our timeline works. But we can't open it too late because I mean it has to be po that has to be posted seven days before the meeting. Uh, understood. Yeah. Understood. I'm just. Saying, I okay. think we're. I think we're closing the. The thirtieth. Right. Of April. So of April. So. We'll get things so we going. would have a little bit right, of room. Well, Karen will get in touch with the town council tomorrow, and she'll get something, and she'll tell them that we need it. It's critical, and she'll get it right off to you. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Very Ken, helpful. Did you have anything else to say? This company from the Chilton Road is putting this EF songs all over the place in Canada. And the company, the main company is from Brussels, so they heard that there was cheap land in Brookfield. And uh, the North Brookfield right now potential is 13 solar fields, solar farms. I know. A lot of money. I know. Okay. Anyone else with public access? Okay. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do it now instead okay. of later on because maybe people will not be watching this, but okay. this is a, probably two important uh, topics. Um, so there's a rumor around town that I, I'm looking to have the campground named in my honor. So I just want to make sure we pass that along. Somebody's spreading a good rumor. Uh, however, uh, I did suggest that we do uh, identify that as the Adena campground yes. because we've always called it campground, so yeah. that's an easy way to do that. And I will be, in fact, uh, putting forth a recommended warrant article related to the removal mm -hmm. of the last three buildings with the caveat that we would want to go for another matching grant so that we could actually take any money that we spend there and get it matched yeah. to do the additional work that's and the cool. like. So that's a good thing. And then today I attended it. Uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Worcester Chamber of Commerce meeting related uh, to federal grants and the ability to obtain federal grants and how we, we will be named in the document such that should we wish to uh, pursue federal dollars that we would have that ability. Outstanding. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for attending these meetings and taking time out of your busy schedule to do that. No, I think it's important. It's it is. It's important. All right. First on our agenda here is Brookfield's Hazard Migration Plan. And we have Adam Minaj from uh, Central Mass Planning Commission here with us. Adam, if you'd like to come up. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Adam Minaro, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Uh, for the past several months, I've been working with Cindy Thompson and Chief Martel to update your hazard mitigation plan. This is a FEMA requirement, it has to be updated every five years. Um, it's been funded through a grant from FEMA through the state. So um, the, temple, the, the planning commission is putting a lot of time into write this plan for you. So right now I'm presenting a draft plan of it as it stands right now. I don't want to get public input. I'm going to have this posted on our website uh, for about two weeks. Um, hopefully it's public in input. So um, if anyone from the audience there's a couple of sheets, uh, if you want to follow along, I'm just going to run through the planning process, what we're trying to get out of the plan. Would you be kind enough also to forward that link directly to us and sure. try to get it out to the community? Absolutely. So we'll go through this handout right now. Um, so why are we doing this plan? Uh, and like I said, it's a FEMA requirement. If for some reason there was a presidential declared disaster, um, this plan allows the town to seek um, compensation for the disaster. There's a big disaster, a hurricane, flooding. Um, so it's really good to have this plan in place. Um, your last plan was a regional plan. It was a 27, <coughs> excuse me, 27 community plan. This is solely Brookfield. It's much more focused. You can concentrate a lot more on Brookfield's critical infrastructure and the hazards and develop strategies to prevent, to prevent anything from happening, or hope anything from happening. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I've been talking all day. Um, some of the natural hazards we were trying to mitigate are flooding, 
high winds, hurricanes, tornadoes, winter storms, um, extreme temperatures, brush fires, droughts, um, the snowstorms are kind of second nature to us in New England. Um, some are worse than others. Yes, some are worse than others, especially this year we've had some pretty bad ones. So what is mit mitigation? Um, the idea is to try to prevent future damage from happening, um, prevent future risks. You're never going to stop the hazards from happening, but uh, if you're aware of a culvert that floods all the time, you can try to replace that culvert, expand it, make it bigger, um, just try to limit the, the, the impacts of the hazards. So it's really trying to break the cycle of disaster and rebuilding. We're trying to prevent the, the rebuilding and disaster as much as possible. So we went through, there's four techniques and tools we've used um, to develop strategies for Brookfield. Um, they're listed here. Infrastructure and structure, such as, um, I mentioned the culverts, uh, preparedness and coordination, response actions. Um, these are uh, really generally communication strategies your emergency operation center, um, your fire response. Um, the third one is education, um, which your water department of the town educating consumers to reduce water usage in a drought, um, be aware of uh, thorn uh, cigarettes and such out the, out the car when they're driving to prevent fires from happening. Um, the fourth one, local plans and regulations, these are generally bylaws that are put in place. So structures and infrastructure projects is a prime example of a flooding, flooding street there. Um, the culverts and dams, you have a number of dams in town. You have the railroad that goes right along the river. Uh, obviously the river is in the pond. These are important, uh, important the railroads are important infrastructure, the roads are important. Um, we want to try to limit the flooding as much as possible. Um, I don't believe there are any real dam problems that we came across. They're all in pretty good shape, at least going to the state. Um, so preparedness and response. Um, there's a national flood insurance program. Um, many home policy owners who live in the flood zones are required to have this insurance. Um, that's a good thing to have in case there is a flood. The evacuation planning, CMRPC has been doing some evacuation planning the last few years. Um, we have Route 9 that runs right through town and 148, these are your prime evacuation routes if uh, whether Brookfield had to be evacuated or say Worcester or Boston had to be evacuated, they'd be funneled through here and among other places. So we'll probably be doing more evacuation planning at some point in the future. <coughs> uh, education awareness. Um, Often your, your police fire have the town websites, the social media. It's a great place to have education. Uh, FEMA and NEMA both have resources available, and um, your fire chief has posted stuff pretty regularly, from what I understand, online. So that's great. Uh, and the last one, public outreach to community events. That's why I'm here. It's public outreach. It's uh, not only good to know, it not only is a requirement by FEMA and NEMA, but it's good to know to talk to the townspeople. I'm not from Brookfield, I'm from Leicester. I, I know Brookfield okay, but really getting the citizens' uh, input in this plan is vital. They know where there's flooding issues, there's no, they know where there's been drought problems in the past. Um, the public outreach in the, is very important to us. Uh, the local plans and regulations, planning uh, and zoning um, bylaws, floodplain regulations, wetland bylaws, these are all help limit the effects of hazards. Um, if you know you have a floodplain that runs through town, you want to try to limit building there in the future. Um, if possible, it's not always possible, but uh, if you know it's going to flood every few years, you find best to try not to build there. So uh, let me just run through briefly the planning process. Um, like I said, I've, I've met with Cindy Thompson from the Highway Department, Chief Martel, a couple times. Uh, they provided me with a lot of information, the critical infrastructure in town, for example, this building, the fire station next door, the, the train tracks. Um, these are all what we consider critical infrastructure. So I've met with them. Uh, we put together a few maps. The maps that we developed uh, show all your critical infrastructure, show where the hazards are that we have identified. 
these will all be online on the, the website. Um, so I'll send you the link. The link's on the bot back of this handout as well. Um, it's great to look through those. Um, public meeting tonight, this is where I, I'm here to present you with the draft. Um, in two two weeks or so, once I, once it's out, public in, input for two weeks, um, you know, make sure the draft's all set uh, and send it off to MEMA. It'll be there for about a month or so. Then it goes to FEMA for a month or so, depending on how busy they are. Um, it's all set. I'll come back to you people um, late spring, early summer, sometime like that for your formal adoption of the plan. So the development of the plan, we've identified, um, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit, identify the critical infrastructure, the local hazards. There's a few areas in town that we currently flood, especially around Clearbog Pond. We've mapped all those. Um, we developed a variety of strategies to help mitigate the flooding, the droughts. Uh, a lot of things you do already, um, such as tree trimming, um, prevent power lines from coming down in storms. Um, it's great that this is already done. Um, it's a picture of the town hall and the fire station here. Um, obviously, pretty important infrastructure. Um, we've also identified dams, pump stations, your communication facility, your repeaters. Um, this is all listed, listed out individually in the plan and mapped on the plan. So uh, there's a couple of um, this is a map here of what is a program called HAZUS. It's a FEMA program. It lets us map where there will be, where the flood zones are, and what kind of impact the flooding would have. Um, there's also an earthquake and a hurricane mapping that we did. We ran an analysis. Um, we don't really have a whole lot of problems with hurricanes and earthquakes here. They, they do occur, uh, as the next page shows you, with a, a map of the earthquake magnitude since 1990. They're kind of scattered about, nothing major, but um, we're lucky they don't happen too often. Same with hurricanes. There's been a handful that come through that have caused a lot of damage. Um, fortunately, we're, we're pretty well off. The dams are in good shape, especially after the 1955 hurricane. Most of the dams are rebuilt. Um, there's a diversion tunnel that runs through Auburn that prevents Worcester from flooding like it used to. Uh, and that impacted Southbridge in this area too, the 55 storm. Some of the specific hazards we identify, like I said, the, the rivers um, are impacted. Uh, there's flooding um, by Mill Street on Route 9 and 148. Um, Quaybog Street by the pond floods, Long Hill Road at Salmon Brook floods. And there's snow drifting um, on Route 48 by East Main Street. The snow drifting, um, the way to mitigate this is by tree plantings, brush bush plantings or uh, even a snow fence. That's about the only way that we know of to really prevent the flooding in an open field, the wind blowing and uh, snow drifting in an open field. Uh, over the winter, uh, there was a public survey out. Um, it was published um, in your local newspaper, the Quaybog Weekly, I believe it was, as well as posted on your website. Um, we had 26 respondents, which is pretty good for a town this size. It's still up. If anybody would like to take the survey, we appreciate the input. It takes about five to 10 minutes. It's about 20 or so questions. Just kind of running through what your concerns are. Um, is flooding concerning you the most? How do you think the town's prepared? Um, anything you do or you think the town should be doing? Collect all this information, try to put it into the plan as best we can. Um, so I'll have the link to the survey up on our website as well. It'll be on this, all this information, the draft plan, the maps, and the survey will all be on the same website. You can peruse it all you want. And I'll have this all up first thing tomorrow morning. Um, next page, the existing mitigation measures. There's already, you already do a fair number. Um, you have a sump plan, comprehensive emergency management plan, the building codes, um, you sweet, street sweeping, Catch basin cleaning, these are pretty vital to prevent flooding. Uh, you treat the roads in the snowstorms, uh, the bylaws, the state checks your dams, make sure, making sure they're in good shape. Um, tree trimmings, um, 
you do have permits for burning outside, so you don't have people just randomly burning. If you can prevent it. Uh, but there are gaps also. Um, the next couple pages show some of the mitigation strategies we developed. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. So continue the tree trimming. That's standard operating for the highway department. It's one of the easiest ways to um, reduce power outages, um, clean the stormwater structures, uh, update the open space and recreation plan. I believe that is expiring it soon. It, um, it has expired. We're in the midst of working it. Janet, uh, uh, Trish has a copy of the grant application. Oh, great. So July 1 will be submitting that. So there's, there's, I believe there's room in those to include some of these types of mitigation measures. So we encourage those to be incorporated where possible. Um, you know, you are going to be, or the highway department is using a GPS in, in the process, the process of this, but um, we want to put it on anyways in case you know, it oh, may yeah. take a couple of okay years. Sure. All, these, all these strategies you can go after grant funding for once the plan's in place. So it, it's, it's competitive grants, but we hope you can try to get it anyways and reduce your costs. So. It's great that you're doing the GPS and all the catch basins and the culverts. Um, it's the first I've heard of a town doing that, and I've done about 10 of these so far. So it's, that's really great. Uh, so the draft plan is going to go off to MEMA. Um, FEMA's going to review it and approve it. Um, so I'll come back to you hopefully over the summer. Um, these things can take time, especially if something comes up with FEMA. It's not the, always the highest priority to review these. Uh, the plan's a good five years. So 2023, myself or somebody else from CMRPC gets to come back and do this with you all over again. Um, it's important. So there's some things, steps you can take after the plan is adopted. Um, you can create a local group to implement some of these strategies. Um, you can integrate um, the plan with other plans, like I said, the open space plan. Um, if you're doing a master plan anytime soon, you can incorporate this kind of thing into that. Um, you can seek sources of funding. Um, there's all sorts of resources on the meme and female website. They're very helpful. They're always very responsive. Um, and like I said, the draft plan will be available on the CMRPC website. If anybody wants, from the audience wants to know, we can take it, the website down for me and my phone number. You're welcome to contact me. Um, I'm going to leave the draft plan up until the 18th. I urge all comments to come in before then. Um, we need to finish off the draft plan and get it off the meme before you so we can start that process. So do you have any questions for me? I know it's kind of a lot of information to throw at you in five minutes, but... Good stuff. Good. It's all good information. Thank you. You're welcome. Next on our agenda is Bill Simpson uh, with an update on the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi Bill. Thank you for having me. I, I came in at 6.15 and then I went back and looked at my email and said Karen said 6.45, so Karen gave me the right time to come, but I read my email wrong, so. But uh, here I am again. Um, first item on the agenda is not necessarily Town Hall Improvements Committee, but the Friends of the Town Hall mm -hmm. is having a, their fifth annual Not in the Town Hall variety show and that is going to be on May 4th at 7 p.m. at the elementary school. Um, $5 per person, $20 max per family, and uh, 7 p.m. Um, and I would encourage everybody in Brookfield to come check it out. It's going to be a fun time. It's usually, we call it a variety show for a reason. Um, there's a lot of variety, and, and, and the kids and everyone participating have, generally has a really good time. So. Check it out, it's uh, our fifth time, and if we're lucky, this will be the last time it's not in the town hall, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. So we'll, we'll keep plugging away, and maybe magic. Maybe, maybe magic will happen and we'll get upstairs. It's on our wish list. It's on our wish list, that's right. So moving on to the town hall improvements committee. Um, <clears throat> an update, the first goal of the town hall improvements committee, which has kind of been 
moving along since we started was the uh, first floor accessibility and the bathroom. Um, we've contracted with Austin Design to do that, as we've discussed. They have a draft plan that they presented to our committee at our last meeting that we reviewed, um, made some suggestions. The um, mechanical engineer was here as well. Um, they're going to revise that, and then we'd like to present that plan to the select board and maybe as a, in the form of a public hearing so we can take questions and, and, uh, and, and go from there. Um, when would you like to do that? I don't know. Um, it's not urgent, but maybe at a convenient time for this board in a month or so. I don't, we should have the, the, the revised plan by then. I'd oh, kind of like to do April, it. I want to get it on soon. Yeah, may, maybe sometime in May, early May, if it's not too crazy. I don't know in, in your plan, your updated plan, um, our treasurer has mentioned that she would like a big, bigger office space. I don't know. Well, I, I don't want to get too into the details of it right now, but what we're proposing essentially is the assessor's office would be cut into one third would be a new bathroom where mm -hmm. the front of the office yeah. is, the back half would be a meeting space through that door with a little kitchenette. Yeah. So we would move the kitchen equipment into there. Okay. And it'd be a small meeting space, so for five or six people for small meetings. Um, the kitchen to the left of that door would be the new assessor's office. Mm -hmm. And that door in the middle there would be another 10 by 20 foot space. Um, and that could be designated as an office if that, that's good. We, and we, we'd seek your feedback on that, yeah, but but there would has, be one she's, more. She's made mention of that to us, because she's almost like in a little closet area. She's well, it literally was a closet. Uh, so. if, oh, it was a computer room. <laughs> yeah. And um, it is. It's, she doesn't have any room in there. At yeah. All. She I, has some space. Yeah, I think I think um, it will offer one other space, and and yeah, and it would be a private space too. Um, so if there's the other thing we had thought about was maybe because the tax collector deals with some people with issues that may want privacy, we thought that might be an option as well. We, we wanted to have that discussion, so that will be part of, part of the ongoing. But there may, there, we're, the drawing right now has another office space built into the, the floor plan. I'm, I'm so, pleased to hear Because it would just be one partition over there that would do that. Um, so that's that status, and I'll work with you to schedule a, a time for that. Yeah, if, if it doesn't squeeze the architect in your committee too much it would be really nice I think to hold that public meeting before the town meeting so if we can figure out a way to get it on one of the selectmen's meetings before the town meeting that would be great if it can't be done yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read we should be we should have the plans back in within a week so it should be should be doable um, I will well, but I'll should be really a vote back of the committee you know that week. Well, I, I mean, I'm, well, so I'm just, I'm just proposing as part of the discussion is that I, I think it would be beneficial to the town if that could be a public hearing prior that's that's my proposal yeah. I don't know if it's I was asking if it was possible so that then we could make an educated decision about it yeah I, th I think we should be able to and uh, um, yeah I don't see why not uh, and I, I'll reach out to him and I'll, I'll get in touch with Karen and we can set up a time that that works um, so the second thing, uh, we've got a new furnace, we've talked about that, um, had some issues with the old furnace as everyone has been aware, we had to replace a circulator pump, um, and that, now the treasurer's office is much better heated, of course now it's warming up, um, so, oh wait, wait no, which, which, which one got fixed, was that the, no the accounting office, sorry, the accountant's office is now heated much better and that the circulator pump is no longer leaking and broken. Um, uh, what we'd like to do, uh, and we've talked to McDonald a little bit about this, but walk through with them and just review the old heating system thoroughly with them and see if they have a better diagnosis and recommendations. Um, so is, is that acceptable oh, to that's, them? Okay. That's yeah, we, we're, we're intending to do it. We just, I just wanted to run that yes. by the board officially. Um, so we'll continue studying the old furnace and seeing how it incorporates, because we'll also be pursuing the redesign for the basement that's the CDBG grant committee, but try to coordinate those efforts. Um, uh, with your permission, we've, we're going to purchase a dehumidifier for the uh, server room and some new door hardware just so we can close that door, the two doors going into that room. So it'll be easier to actually do some dehumidification in there. Um, uh, we're still, we've got the counter unlocked, we're looking at the files in there right now. 
so that's an ongoing challenge to find out what to do with the existing files and then next steps if we can you know dismantle it or move it or get a bunch you of football can, players you can or something you can yeah. dismantle yeah so so we're, we're we're taking our time with it but the first thing is the files that's the important thing um, and they may we may get them upstairs with the other files and start the with the sorting process that's something we have to do too is get all those organized upstairs exactly and that's a big project um, the stair lift, the platform lift, it's not a stair lift, it's a platform lift. Um, we met with Garaventa, um, Paul um, McCartney, McCarthy, McCarthy. Um, uh, we, the committee is aware of the steps to, to uh, get the platform lift installed and what approvals we need to get from various locations now. Um, we talked to Jeff Taylor, the building inspector, he has no objections to the lift, but we may need to get a letter from him to send to the ABA. Either the AB, the Architectural Access Board, AAB, yeah. um, but there's also the elevator board, um, and they may require uh, this is something that started in the last like six months. I guess they're requiring a sign off from a structural engineer. So we may, have, we're trying to get contact. So if you know a structural engineer, Anybody? Anybody? If anyone knows a structural engineer, please contact the Town Hall Improvements Committee, um, especially if there's somebody local, um, just so we can get an evaluation or at least get a price for it so we can include that in the warrant article. And then finally, will there be a warrant article on the platform lift at the town meeting or the special or the annual? Yeah, because that, wasn't that on for last year? We had requested it, sent an email with a request be, when we were talking about a special, but there never, never was a special yeah. town it meeting. Would it would go more like, it would be on the annual instead of the special, because the special is more of like a cleanup. So probably a lot of the articles that we passed over should be on the uh, annual town meeting. Right. I believe when we asked a similar question last meeting, your guidance was that they would all have to be resubmitted. Yes, however. they do. They, that's what I said. So, okay. They so all should, have to, yes, should, they all have should to be the, resubmitted. Should the town hall committee then submit a yeah, warrant them. article? Yeah. Okay. Anybody that has any article that we didn't, that we passed over last year should resubmit them. Okay, so. Uh, they did send out the forms already. She said, and, in the third, and. April 30th, I'll be sending it to you. I may be, but if you could send it to me, that would be great. And the, and the close of the warrant is April 30th. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that this week and, and get that in your hands. Um, uh, yeah, so it's probably the same as it was last time, but I'll get that through so the wording can be reviewed and, and all that stuff. Um, but that would be the only warrant article coming from the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, We've also discussed snow cleats for the roof. Uh, that was reviewed by the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, who at their re their request was to scale back the s total scope of it. Um, it's still not on it. We're not presenting it as a warrant article. We were thinking long term. We just need to address the, the snow hazard. Um, um, can I just clarify, and I, I, I don't know that I saw the communication back from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, though I might have a copy in my email, so yeah. if I haven't read it, shame on me. Um, but specifically it was while it seems that you, your committee is willing to kind of push off the completion of the larger pro project, I know that I've at least witnessed some interesting snow events off the roof right by the entrance, so if yeah. there is a way to get somebody in for some lesser amount of money to mitigate at least, at least the, the entrances. At least the entrance primarily the entrance door hazard, because we post to people that that's not a valid entrance and it's locked even during business hours. Yeah. But specifically the front entrance and the, and I have never seen it come off by the handicapped entrance. Yes, it has. It has come off over We there. had, years, many years ago, we had, seen, we had a senior citizen Go that ahead. was here for a meeting. They parked over there. Luckily, they were in here, and it, it all came down and broke the windshield. And okay. So it comes so, off. The so, table. so that that specific section, if there is a way to work getting the risk mitigation in place around those entryways, okay. I, I think it's worth pursuing sooner rather than later. Okay. So, so we can do that. We have the. We know. We have the the roofers who have given us proposals in the past, we can ask for a revised limited scope just proposal. That, just for that corner of the building. Yeah, and, and that way we will have something. Um, I don't know, should I put a space holder on the warrant? Um, 
I would put a space holder on the warrant without a dollar value. Yeah, because and, and hopefully we can get something. Sure. If it makes sense, it makes sense, but at least we'll have a spot for it. Exactly. Okay, so we can do that too. Um, we replaced the light bulb in the front hall. Okay. Yeah, it's brighter now, which is nice. Um, the clock, the hands of the clock tower at the school being painted. Mm -hmm. The students are doing that, which is nice. Um, the gears are being replaced for free. We had one broken gear, and we're getting two for free now. That's so, fair. yep. So that's good. Um, uh, and the Sturbridge Fire Department again was nice enough to let us use their ladder truck, and hopefully they'll let us do it again when we have to put them back together. Although I think he can do that from up there now. So. Um, Smoke alarms, we've also looked into this. Uh, we're just gonna reach out to a, um, we've talked to the chief a little bit and we're gonna also talk to a fire systems engineer who I think will give us some just advice for free and I have a contact. Um, it's on our list of things to do. Uh, just to get us, you know, find out what the scope of getting compliant is. Um, and then lastly, and not necessarily town hall improvement committee, but the CDBG committee, as it relates to the town hall, um, there's funding in place that we have to get an ADA transition plan for the town um, that is in process of hiring a consultant for that. Yep, and uh, the we will also be in the procurement process to get a designer to run it for the design of the basement, in which we have funding for that process. So um, I think that's it. Any questions? That's all. Right. Yeah, a lot of work, Bill. Thank you. So. You're, you're very informative in what you've been doing. It's great. Well, thank you. really gone getting on. Oh, and, and, and uh, Don and Al and Paul have swept out and cleaned up the basement quite a bit. So it's a lot nicer down there now. So I, if you want to go for a walk and check it out, it's cleaner. Um, <laughs> the bat's gone. Yeah. It, it, yeah, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> um, but yes, it, it's looking much better. And um, but taking an active role and then we got hands on the ground cleaning things up and keeping an eye on stuff so okay. thank you very much thank you thank you uh, next on our agenda is the WRTA discussion <clears throat> okay. I wish we had copies of this this is a letter from Mr. Helen. I thought you were just going to read parts of it. Do you want me to read parts of it, or would you all copy it? Well, he, he, he's pretty depressing, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Oh, did you like it? No, it was. It was. It was I, I think the high. It's the subject is that we have few few writers. Well, I, yeah, that's the reality. That. But there is a young lady who has been going to college in Worcester for three years. She's in her senior year, moving into the senior year, and she's ridden the bus. In fact, the reason that uh, we had targeted the time is I thought she was getting off the early bus so that she could attend the meeting, but she wasn't that day, so now she's changed her sch schedules and she will be in attendance on the 12th. So that's that. But, but again, because of Rudy, uh, what, what Rudy's outlined here is the WRTA's argument for why this would be the, the stop that would be lost. And it, it's unfortunate, but, but I think that we rallied the last time. There are additional rallies that are going on uh, that will put and highlight what's going on so that it, it's important for those that need it. My argument and the argument I made the other day with them and the argument I'll make for April 12th is that we should in fact use this route to connect to Pioneer Valley. Yes. And there ought to be a connection there. And if you, if we, and again, the meeting today, one of the thoughts that came through was Mass Pike is is uh, two block to or basically a parking lot. On Easter weekend, it was again. Yeah. If it then rallies go going down to Route 20, and Route 20 backs up, and if you're going through Char Charlton on an Easter Sunday weekend, you you come here going, you get locked up there. So where does the traffic come? It comes through this. Uh, Route 49 access area over by your house, right? I mean, that's why you have the traffic yeah, that you have. have it, yeah. and, and so we're blo all blocked up. Yeah. And so it's what are you going to do for Route 9 so that you can improve ridership, mm -hmm. not only for public transportation, but for, for private, private transportation as well. So I think it's important that people come out on the 12th and, and share their interests. And first now with public transportation, but again, it's just the whole transportation infrastructure of central Massachusetts, we've lost it. 
and so hopefully we can. Uh, we even used to have years ago. We used to have Peter Pan bus came out years ago yeah. because there was so many people who used it to go to work in the city. And what, what, it's a people, shame. what people have done now is they force themselves into cars. Yeah. I mean, you even have quick uh, community development. Yeah having young people come in that need to get cars, they can come in there, they can um, do some cer certain training, financial training, they can actually get a loan to get themselves cars and whatnot. So you've set up the whole other infrastructure to force people into cars. Into cars. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. it, it, wow. It, it, another thing is too bad, I know we'd have to have one, too bad we couldn't even have, like years ago, we had a train stop down here. It's really a shame. The okay. train comes down this way, you know, just think the people, you know, could take the train to go home. So too. that topic came up again. Yep. Senator Govey is in, in joint, jointly filing a bill related to Palmer. Yep. But the point that was made today at the meeting at the chamber was that there needs to be stops between Palmer and Worcester. Mm -hmm. Because, again, and again, what was pointed, yep. what, yeah, what, what was pointed out is Westboro has taken advantage where they've got the, the stop there and they've actually uh, te uh, teamed up with WRTA to get people to businesses in that area so people don't don't have to worry about uh, uh, their connection mm -hmm. to their workplace. So again, it's something we need to be thinking about yes. as, uh, again, the whole infrastructure of, of uh, Central Mass. And, and one of the things I, I'm not quite certain I understand, and, it, and uh, I'm going to try to be at the, the 12th meeting at least, is that there's all given the the low-ish ridership there are lower cost alternatives to provide that service than sending a 40-foot bus out this way i was just and and, that and, and, and having some sort of designated van service to yeah. your earlier points mm -hmm. of connecting to the pioneer valley and down into sturbridge would do amazing things for the ridership potentially and so what's happened where Warren and Pioneer Valley is they've got a couple of vans. Speaking of federal monies that might be available or even state monies that might be available, whether it's Brookfield or regional or whatever, but there's, an, there's a thought that you could have some sort of van service. Mm -hmm. And again, how that would get set up. Yeah, and who, I thought I was who, going to mention that. Whether too, it's yeah. the seniors directing it or yeah, something. something. There's got to be. So we're going to see where the 12th yes, goes, yeah. see if we can just cut it off and have a status quo. If failing that, then we could do something. Yeah. I know you have close connections with the Quavog Valley yep. Community Development Center. How, how, how did the connector work out? Did they get refunded for that to continue or no? Quavog connector? Yes, that's what, yeah, that is in place. Right. And they got two vans to feed it. Okay. So. As I, uh, I, can, I, I can double check with yeah. Sheila if you'd like. Because I, I knew, I know that at one point when I called to find out if they needed the word spread, they were like, no, we're maxed out because it's that oh, popular service. They are, yes. So, you know, I'm wondering if there's ways for, for us to potentially pursue some grant money to ensure the continuation of that, perhaps enhancing it and see. Look, that, it would be a plan B. Yeah. If plan A is to keep, to keep, keep things it. the same, right. failing plan A, Maybe we can connect with them, sorry for the pun, yeah. but, but connect <laughs> That's okay. to see what we could do to enhance ridership. So. But I'll take that as an action. So. All right, but, but everybody show up on the 12th. Placards, whatever, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, let's get the word out. Sounds like it's a done deal, based on what you said. I s Hopefully it's not. This document was depressing. But we fought it the last time and won, we gotta fight it again. Okay. <clears throat> Next tier is to ratify. I made a change on the special town meeting when I had realized um, that it was we was gonna close the warrant um, on the thirty first of May, the end of May. The warrant has to be signed and ready to be posted um, 10 days, before, 14 days before for a special. So it's short and then, you know, it's too close for time. So that's why I said that we could open it on um, April 3rd and we'll close it on May 17th. So I would like to have a vote to ratify that. You have the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Close on May 17th. It closes on. Uh, Thursday, May 17th at 3 p.m. Okay. Right. 
Then we have some more special permits here for the approval for the um, little play ball pond again. Yeah. <laughs> we have one here from the Tri County uh, Bass Masters. Another one for South Pond for the Quaybog Lake Association. And we have another one for South Pond for the Quaybog Lake Association. So motion. I'd like to have a motion to motion allow to those to be signed. Motion to approve. Second. On the favor? Aye. Now 1,000 plus. 1,000 plus. I noticed in your article with the citizen at 800. Yeah, well, yeah, but then you guys did the, right after that, you approved that whole bundle. Yeah. Oh, we did, but while best signing away, we did have a great meeting with the Blue Trail folks, the Chippewa River. Uh, we had a dozen people come from all over, um, and the, the map is in draft form and some corrections and whatnot, but it'll be out and available in May, and people will be kayaking the Quay Bar. Oh, that's great. That's great. Got to get people to come into town and see, see the history and everything we have, because it is it's a beautiful area down there, the Quay Bar. Yep. Okay, the next one is that to sign a municipal transfer, and this is from the library. And it's uh, in the amount of a $1,000, and it's to go into the library book account. And it's to meet the state law standard for the FY18 municipal appropriation of materials, expenditure, and requirements. And this was put in by uh, Brenda. Brenda doesn't say, just as no. the library. And I'd like a motion um, to approve this so we can sign it and then we'll get it off to the advisory committee. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think it's appropriate that we should just ensure that the advisory committee gets a note to make certain that when we set the budget this year that it's appropriate to meet the requirements. Because I think it's about every third year we run into this where we thought we met the a two and a half percent requirement from the state, and we don't quite make it. Okay. Okay, ne next one here is an appointment. I have that. Sign the contract for the grant for the ADA. Okay. I would, uh, would all three of us have to sign it? Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think just you. Is it? No, maybe all three. No, I guess so. Um, you know, okay. I would like a, a motion um, for the chair to sign the ADA grant. Do you have that motion? I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
I just had one quick question. With the special town meeting warrant, it opens the 30th, correct? Closes the 30th. Closes the 30th. It opens on the 3rd. Okay, the special. So, 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 so. Okay. Oh, the special? Oh, let me see. And then the annual. We have it right here. We just, we just had it that you just read when you ratified. Okay, That's the, did you ask special? The special open, opened on the 3rd and right. closes on May 17th, and the annual opened at our last meeting, right. and it closes on April 3rd. That's right here. Okay, got it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the, the, the dates of writing were, were accurate. I was just rereading re the email. Okay, the next one is an, is an appointment um, for Brendan Cunningham to be appointed to as a member of the Recreation Committee. And he had, um, we have a letter here from uh, Jeff Landine. It was sent, to, no, it was sent by, um, it was sent by Brendan Cunningham. He said, I would like to submit this letter requesting that I, Brent Cunningham, become a member of the Brookfield Recreation Committee. I've been a resident of Brookfield for 10 plus years and I'm able to enjoy the Recreation Committee's events for several. I feel like it's time to lend my hand to assist our community by serving on the committee if you will have me. So I would like to make a motion to appoint Brendan Cunningham to uh, the Recreation Committee with a term to expire June 30th, 2018. Yeah, motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jeff Landy did recommend him. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff did. Good deal. Okay, now this is our correspondence that we had. This is from uh, Ed LaPence, I think you say his name. It's for permission to use the great room of the town offices adjacent to the assessor's office to hold a free public information forum on gun safety for children. This program for parents and educators is, is entitled Kids and Guns. It's a parent's guide to discussing guns and gun safety with their children. The TAG, the TAG program, our talk about guns, is offered free of charge and is designed to help parents begin meaningful discussions with their children about gun safety issues. The key question directs towards parents is, what do you know about what your kids know about guns? The presenter for this program will be Ed LaPence from Brookfield. Uh, he has earned his uh, master's ed degree from Eastern Washington University and a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from the University of Mass. 
He obtained law enforcement experience with the Oregon State Police and several private security firms. Uh, he states that he is hopeful participation in this program will result in parents taking a more proactive approach to ensuring their children's overall safety. There are no weapons or facsimile weapons used in this farm. It is strictly a discussion with parents on how to begin conversations pertaining to gun issues with their children. Uh, and you can contact him. His phone number is here and his email. And he's thank you for your cooperation and conduct. And these are some different questions that are frequently asked. So I don't know how both of you feel on this situation. This is something that we want to think about and bring it up at the next meeting. It's just the time, the time isn't stated. He's just looking for the use of the Yeah, he's just using for the use. Do you know who he is? He comes in the town hall quite frequently. Usually he goes in to see Al. He was looking for land or whatever. I know you know him if you saw him. So, they've been telling me, too, I, uh, that I know him because he comes in. So the only thought that I have is we've got the training room down at the police station. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and I'm wondering if it, he, he shouldn't have a conversation with, with Mike. Yeah. And I think that that... Because, he, again, we do these things all the time in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not this particular yeah. program, but similar programs. And, and, and I know that uh, Mike's very familiar with the, the kinds of programs. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking it's I think TAG is one of the ones I've heard of that's yeah. considered one of the more effective ones for educating children. Because people don't even realize yeah. how yeah, I, to have that conversation. Yeah, I, I, I would think that... Might want, might want some input on it. Yeah. 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 Whether you prefer it here or there. I'm looking for some more, uh, another correspondence I had. Uh, there was a letter from a woman that lives on, um, if I can find it. She lives on Boys Avenue. It's about the racetrack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's here. it right here. Right here, right, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so we want to do, let's have Ed oh, talk we, to Mike. Yeah, yeah, we got to finish that one. Have okay. Ed talk to Mike. We'll have Mike, him talk to Mike. And, and, and my thought is that they don't need this kind of size of a room. No. The training room at the police station would be ideal if, if he and Mike were to agree. Okay, maybe you should, yes. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good Mike. idea to do the yes. training. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only concern that I would have is to have Mike connected to it. Right, and, and, and if, if in the chief's opinion it would be better or they think that it might be popular enough to require right. this space, yeah. then, sure. then sure. we can entertain it. So, but we need good, to know, like, But they do have time. a good size meeting room. Yes, that's yeah. nice yeah, I think it would be a nice room to meet, yeah. So, yeah, so if you want to get in contact yes, with him and ask him, you know, what time and when, when he'd like to do it. Okay, and this came in, uh, and I have called this woman, I haven't heard back from her yet. She's, uh, her name is Carol Rossetti, and she lives at Five Boys Ave in, here in Brookfield, questioning what seems to be a dirt bike recreation area at the end of Quaybog Street near the transfer station. It's all, always noisy in past years, and now they have signs and people coming and going with dirt bikes. The noise on the weekend is awful and insistent. Starting last summer only got worse. It was, it was all day long on this weekend, and it interferes with relaxing at home. I have no idea what this place is or what the zoning allows. I know our neighborhood is not the same at all, and I live at Boys Ave, and please contact me. I've contacted her. I haven't heard back yet. So do you, have, you still have the noise meter? Yeah, we'll have to get up. Would they, you get that yeah, to her? They were, they were down there all weekend, even on Easter Sunday, and then I even had another neighbor stop, and he lives on Lake, um, not, is he on Boys? He's on Boys also. He's lived in town many years, and it's getting so bad, he said him and his wife are considered selling their home and moving out of the community. Because yeah. they said they came here for peace and quiet, and he said it's just gotten worse. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, the only recourse we have is what is the noise, yeah. and the state laws are very yeah. specific. Yeah. Environmental police have responsibility to enforce well, we, that law. We've called the environmental police many times, and they won't come down. 
but where I where I would be headed, and I, I, yeah. I understand that. Mm -hmm. What what I would say is that if we had documents from neighbors that yeah. say on this day this yeah. noise level, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. then it's we now then could go back to Bill yeah. Davis and mm -hmm. again because he has control in this region as far as I mean they have f very few environmental officers. I mean, yeah. let's be r real clear. So it's. Uh, the message to Bill to say th this was the day, these were the meetings, this is inappropriate, to see if we get action there. If we don't get action there, then we can drive it up to Birth Hume and to Gobi yeah. and to say you need enforcement activity here because this is breaking the law. And, um, oh, uh, what's up? I was just going to say, I just Sorry. Oh, I know. Even when town council was here yesterday, I talked to Jeff about it. And uh, he said the Board of Health does have a lot of power with that concern. Well, we got to have the, oh, but we need the documentation. We yeah, need the documentation. We, do. we need the documentation. Yep. So we've just got to encourage people who live down um, uh, all the little streets off of Quaybog Street. If they're being bothered by this, they've got to you know write us and give us documentation, which is very important. Well, and you have the meter, so. And I have the meter. So and if they want to get in touch, you know, with me, and you know, they can use the meter, and they can see uh, what their readings are down there in their neighborhoods. Okay. Um, the, the, there were some articles recently, and I need to go back and find them. And if you want, I can forward them to uh, Karen so we could potentially review at a future meeting. There are some communities that are passing sound ordinances based off of the same. Um, sound standard that is used by the national, it's one of the national motorcycle associations. Yep. yep. Um, and that, and compliance to that is a lot, is very measurable and, and better defined in the current state law. So that may be kind of a plan B as well that we could pursue yeah. potentially getting something like that in place. I know we have looked at a lot um, of ordinances. The, the, the other opportunity might be if we could, um, and I don't know if, if he'll, he'll answer a, a direct contact from, from any one of us, but I know at, at one point, um, if we could at least see if the, the owner's open to negotiating, perhaps at least setting only certain weekends to be open, uh, because that, then at least we could guarantee a certain amount of peace and quiet space for for folks that are in the surrounding area. Because one of the things that you find is when you have something open all the time, it's it's not as popular necessarily as if it's a, a, a scarce commodity. Um, and maybe it's worth trying to open a dialogue with them over being well, a better neighbor. We have tried that. We tried, yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah, we have that, we've yeah. tried that. We tried to, he, he, no, he's out of it. He, he has a right and he's gonna take advantage yeah. of his right. So the only thing that we have is enforcement is by environmental police yeah. of noise, yeah. and uh, again, he's been warned that that is a stipulation that noise is a, is a requirement. So he's been warned, but but again, we don't have the data, so therefore we cannot right. push. So we need the data. And he has it advertised on his website that he's open seven days a week. Yeah. And there's a sign right on the front door oh. saying, "We're not invited in." Yeah. Oh, right oh, yeah. Keep out. Yep. He's got cameras there to see who's coming in and out. And, you know, practice, he calls it. The cars from out of state, so he you knows that it's more than just a practice session. Yep. Yep. Well, right. that's because practice means you don't have to abide by that same noise uh, standard that I'm talking about. Because if you're running, if you're running sanctioned matches, then you have to follow that specification. You have to do sound checks prior to the races. And if you claim it's practice, then you can run open pipe and yeah. not run factory. Except mm. that you're violating state law. law. State law is very clear. 85 yeah. DBA. Yep. 93 for a bike older than so many years or something. So anyway, yeah. Read that one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's not pretty. Okay. Put a new battery in that machine yeah. and get some data. We'll have to get some more data. All right. We move on now. We're going to review the selectmen's budget. Okay. okay. Do you have copies for everybody when you pass out? And, um, Beth? No. We each have one. Of course, I left mine in my office and then I have to go get it. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, if you take a look at it, the only thing, the thing that we didn't allow for was Larry's um, IT budget, which I went over it with Carrie and pulled up the, the contract, and she said we have a little buffer. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. If you look over, um, we do have another page that breaks down the, the two items that we are, two or three that we are going over the budget. It's $500 more than last time. It was $25,000. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. We have to add another $500 on that. So it's basically that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I did check with Cindy with the diesel and the gas, and she said it's going the same. Yeah, but underneath, though, you had. To right, because it's the useful heating fuel. We went up 500. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to use it, but just in case, you know, mm -hmm. said we should have some buffers. And then if you go to where the next tab is, okay. and if you look at the next page after that, there's a copy of a sticky note that it's line 80 and line 90, it explains why they're higher. So the wages are all the same. The physical exams with uh, keeping in there. I asked Carrie about that too. I asked her suggestion. So we should we should continue funding mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, payment of loop taxes, we have an extra fifty dollars. The computer maintenance is a big one, and that's because she said that we did not really budget for Larry last year, but it was taken out of other accounts, so we have to budget for it this year. And that's broken down as you see the 16560 for Larry, the 440 buffer, just in case you have another thing have some okay. expenses above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And then line 90, which is a Selectman Town website, was it was 11 three last year because we set it up. Mm -hmm. This year we're asking for 6750 for virtual town hall. $2,000, that's for the 50 emails, or, or 40 somewhat emails at $50 each. Yeah. And then, now, Tom G, I put 2,000, he's probably not gonna use 2,000, I just wanted to have it in there in case we need him, like for instance, Jay, my email totally broke down. I don't like, I know, I was there yeah, and it's still, in the, he's still trying to fix it, but he said he didn't want to come on as a town employee per se, which we didn't really ask him to, but he wanted to come on as, as a consultant. He said per diem he would be interested in helping us if when we need him, which is basically, we call on him a lot, yeah. and we don't ever pay him a lot. We'll probably never pay him that much for the year 2000, but it's in there just because I feel like if we keep calling on him, we do have to pay him a fair wage. And he's very helpful. Oh, sure. And so, again, we put a 250 buffer in there just in case because if we don't use it, that's fine. We probably won't, but... It's, it's, better, to it. it's better to have it in there than not to Especially have it. Especially with electronics, because it's yeah. electronic. I do have a question about the streetlights, because I know I had a conversation with her that the that National Grid was um, potentially going to offer to replace our current lights with... Um, LED? Yes. Um, yes. As part of a grant program? We 
Oh, I don't know if it's a grant program, but I know he's he's uh, put a few around town. Yeah. Yeah. He put a couple samples in to try them out. Yeah. But um, so, would you just circle back around with him because I believe make sure we have the right number. Yeah. Right, because yeah. yeah. I, I think that I think we might get um, some mitigation from okay, the streetlight okay. budget right. based off of that. Okay. I know there were yeah. I remember he reported there were several or a few, but not. No, he, he, he had uh, two put in just to get a sense for, or the actually National Grid put two in for us so that he could evaluate the yeah. quality of the light and determine I'll basically. I'll find out where they were put in because then we'll check the bills and see how much, if there are any lower. Oh, is it bipolar? Well, uh, that's what I'm thinking, isn't it bipolar? No. Well, we, we get charged, yes, we get charged by bipolar. But, yes. but he won't have, I mean, this has only been a month. It's only been a month. So, oh, so, right. so, so, so the, the, the question he had is, what do you want to do? There's two two lights. One's a softer light over by the church. Yeah. Over tip top, it's the brighter of them. And, and so my, my thought, when I recommend mm -hmm. it to him, is the brighter lights by places like tip top are important where it's an open space mm -hmm. and the like, yeah. and, and the extra is not going to help anyway, that it would be a combination of both of the lights rather than one size or the other. Mm -hmm. If it were one size, then there was going to be several thousands of dollars of benefit. There oh. would be something less if it were the brighter one. Right. And so, so, so we're looking at a blend. I so think he was looking at a blend of the two. It, though, if he hasn't had the so they, they, can, they can give him, they can give oh, him an estimate. They, they can, okay. Or we yeah. can budget for the current amount. Yeah. He had an estimate as far okay. as one or okay. the other, but then I threw in a wrench to say, but I think you want blended. Blended. And so whatever the higher number would be would be appropriate for the budget. We okay. just wouldn't necessarily spend it. Yeah. And, and then we'd know months. after the first year yeah. what it was so actually going to run. And, and I don't know if it would be installed in time for the full year, so that would be the other question anyway. So. But Herb, Herb had the ball on that, so yeah. if you okay. just check yeah. with him. Okay. And yes, we were delinquent in our response. Well, by the way, at the end of the legal services, if you remember when I spoke to um, Michelle, she said an extra $5,000 from last year. It's a very ballpark estimate. Yep. Okay. So it's just a level funding based on, yeah. with the exception of those several. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, the town hall. We have um, Karen, 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 that keeps saying, Karen, pardon me, one, one other question. Um, I know that uh, Larry got us one quote on new phones, um, but I don't know if some of that wasn't going to be voice over IP and would that impact what our telephone contract and leases cost would be in the go forward. We may have, if we have got new so we replaced the phone system. But you know, we don't do, oh, did I keep, up to, I don't know if you're up to date on that, but the phone, we did have a phone man come in. Yep. And yeah, I know I found them for you. $200, I think it was. He told me those were good, solid phones. He didn't see any need to even think of replacing them for at least two years or so. Okay. So that's why it wasn't even an issue. We didn't even want to address it. So do we need yeah. to take that out of the capital plan then? Um. Because we were going to put it in, is what, five years? Yes. Well, I mean, in five years, we, 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 could, we could put it at the yeah, end, put it put it at the end. end of the period. Yeah, yeah. Okay. because right now, he's, and he said, he said, there's really no need to replace it. You can well, think about it for at least a couple of years. So, I mean, let's make do with what we Great. have. Great. Thanks for finding that's, your resource. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That was a miracle. That, that's, I said to my, that's my Craigslist magic. He mm -hmm. was Craigslist. in Leicester. I said, oh, I wish we knew you were right here. Yeah. That would have been so much easier. Yeah. Um, I think it was $200 or under. Just under yeah. 200 it, it's, it's, it's Google magic. magic. It's so. fantastic. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Good Thank contact. You. Uh, has anybody, have we heard anything of, um, from anybody putting in for a uh, percentage on raises this year? I haven't heard um, any buzz at all. I, I had a conversation with Steve, uh, the chair of the advisory committee, and um, I wanted to have the conversation with you all mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we're aligned. Um, and I had meant to ask if it was put on this agenda, and I spaced it, so I'm glad that the topic came up. Um, what would you think, because he's got a bunch of people who are very tied in with, like, 
corporate finance right now and community mm -hmm. activities, and I was thinking of just asking them to bring a proposal forward based off of um, taking a look at where we are from a revenue perspective, take a look at where we are from a standpoint of levy limit perspective, and to bring to us during one of the, the joint meetings a proposal about where they think we should land from a standpoint of uh, merit increase. Um, I haven't heard any buzz from the employees. I thought it would be a great heard, opportunity. I haven't heard anything. I think it would be a great opportunity for them to truly kind of look at the, the economic factors and see where the town sits financially with some of the other budget submissions mm -hmm. and bring us a recommendation and see if, if uh, we have concurrence. I think we weren't we going to plan on having a joint meeting? We are going to have a joint meeting with the um, with the advisory board. But I believe on the twenty fourth tentatively. Yeah. Yeah. And so you want to bring in the employees also? Um, I figured we'd see what they, the advisory said first. Oh, okay. We'll talk to the advisory uh, but I mean, first. If, if we can, I mean, if they want to come, it's an open meeting. They're welcome mm -hmm. to come. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I will tell you from the. The meeting today, back to economic development yeah. and, and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things, the region is strengthening. Yes. yes. There is just, we, just because we're on this side of Worcester, it's not quite hit us as much as others, mm -hmm. but to the to the east, they're seeing tremendous growth. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we're going to, it's going to hit us, but just not right off. Yeah. Yeah, or we always, as we as always lag time wise. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we've got to be careful. Because, so, they, they, oh, because excuse me, but I know the last few years, um, they got like a three percent in one year. In two years, I think it was three, and then wasn't it two last year? Two and a half. Right? Two and a half last year. Right? So, but again, the yeah, we've got input three. from all sources yep. would be important. Yep. I think Social Security did two point zero one this year. Yeah, that makes sense. So do you need a motion? We're just going to go with what we have yeah. with those different... Yeah, like to make a motion to accept the sure. budget as it is with no... Uh, it's pretty much level funded budget except yeah. for a couple items. Little so little I would like a motion. You have that motion? Second. Um, in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have it? I believe Linda. And I did want to bring up one thing today. I was in, I talked to Carrie today. And she says that cash receipts are balanced through fiscal 17. Excellent. And then also she said she's currently uh, pulling and fixing any reconciling and reconciling as any other items that she has. And then um, she says that um, Justin Cole there from Bay yep. State is willing to come in under the audit, I guess, and work with the treasurer's office and help them to reconcile. So, so we're ready for the scan loan call or not? Mm, no, we're not quite ready. No. Okay, we're close. We, but she said we will have free cash probably certified for town meeting for sure. Excellent. Well, Excellent. It, it, given where we are, do we know, I know she's saying we'll have it certified by town meeting, but will we have the, do we know when the, when we'll submit it? Because that's the, that's the date where we get out of jail with the state is once it's in their hands. Okay, I'll ask her when it went. That we talked about the middle of May. Yeah. That's why I say, are we, are we ready to call scan one? No. Good progress. But it is good progress. I was happy to hear that today yeah. when she told me that because I wanted to see her and talk. So, <clears throat> just so everybody understands, yeah. this goes from mid 2014 mm -hmm. now to 2017. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Big deal. Yeah. She's done a lot of hard work on it. So we have to give her a lot of credit for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so if there isn't anything else on the agenda tonight, um, I would like a motion to adjourn at, uh, what, 758. we'll call it 758. You have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.